This is my second attempt at recording this uh, lecture on hook development length. Um, this time I've mirrored my iPad screen to the laptop so now I can look at the slides on my laptop so I'm looking into the camera. Anyway, let's try this out. What we're trying to do is determine the development length for hooks and the application for that is oh, got a column with a girder coming into it and uh, I'm gonna hook the steel because that distance there is not long enough to uh, develop the bar and so you're gonna hook the bar so you can get the shorter development length and uh, before we talk about how to calculate uh, that development length we need to talk about what actually is a hook so um, here's uh, oh, myself out of the way. So um, there are 180 degree hooks, which uh, look like this, and 90 degree hooks, which look like that. And there are minimum bend diameters for this kind of stuff. Let me uh, make that smaller. And so these bend diameters. Uh, or radii, uh, they have certain lengths, uh, minimums, you can't bend those as tight as you want, and then these uh, dimensions are specified as well. And to know what these dimensions are, you can look them up in the textbook, uh, you can look them up in the ACI code, or you could look in that uh, CRSI app that I had, um, that I showed the class. And what I've done is I've taken uh, let me get myself out of the way again. Um, I went to the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute website, and I, I got this. And to be a standard hook, you have to be a certain diameter there. Um, let me release that. Oops. How did I do that? to zoom that back out and see if I can mm, oh, I must have touched this. There we go. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, uh, let me erase this. Sorry about that. Um, what I'm trying to do is that this. Okay. To be a standard hook, you need a certain extension here, and these diameters, uh, there's a minimum diameter for that. Okay, so there's uh, requirements for that. Here, here's maybe a clearer picture of that. Okay, so um, you can find these anywhere. Uh, you can look for them. Uh, here are the bend diameters. So you're not required to know these things. All you need to know is that when you use a hook, you have to use a, a standardized hook, and, um, and th these are well known, okay? But what you do need to know is the development length of the hook. How long does that hook need to be so that uh, the bar won't slip out of the column? This changed in 2019, just last year. So here's the old equation, pre-2019. So you look at that, okay. And here's the new equation, significantly different. So this is starting last year. There's all kinds of things are different. Let me go back. The, denom the denominator, 0.02 is one over 50. Now it's one over 55. Um, there was an epoxy factor. Now there's an E, R, O, and C factor, and the bar diameter is raised to the 1.5 power. There's quite a few factors here. Um, e, R, O, C, and this lambda. Let's talk about these in turn. But before we do that, notice that you calculate this equation, um, eight bar diameters and six inches, and the greatest of those is your development length. Okay, so let's go through these multiplier factors. Okay, this is the same lambda. If you have lightweight concrete, it has a lower tensile strength, so you reduce 
that by 0.75 in front of the square root f prime c and again uh, psi for square root of f prime c there's the epoxy factor um, for the straight bar there was 1.5 1.2 and 1.0 for hooks they're just 1.2 or 1.0 and there's the excess steel factor uh, you get to reduce it by the the amount you actually need divided by the amount you provide okay um, I'm gonna talk about this R factor confinement factor uh, a little more later so let's skip to uh, um, Sigma O okay and so uh, if you have a number 11 and smaller bar and it's in a column so you're hooking into a column and the side cover uh, is greater or equal to 2.5 inches it's 1.0 or if you're hooking into something that's not a column so maybe like a beam coming into a girder and the side cover is greater than six bar diameters you can use 1.0 as well otherwise you have to use 1.25 okay, and we'll come back to that r factor i want to go through the other ones and then there's a concrete factor um, if you are greater than or equal to 6,000 psi the factor is one and if you're less than that, there's an equation there uh, to calculate the factor. So now this R factor. Um, you have this transverse hoop steel, which are hoop steel going around uh, your bars. And then this HS okay, is the hooked bars. That's the area of the hooked bars. And uh, to explain this, let me show you a picture first and then come back to this. So here's a picture. And so you see these bars here. These are the hooked bars. Okay. Right there. Same in the other picture. Uh, these hooked bars are AHS. You have a certain amount of steel coming into the column. If you have greater or equal to 40% of that, in these hoops and these hoops let me, let me change this to uh, purple these hoops here can be either horizontal or vertical according to these specifications in the drawing if those hoops are 40 percent of the hooked steel let's go back to that factor you can use 1.0 if they're not at least 40%, you have to use 1.6. The other option for using 1.0 is this right here. And what that is, is let's try and draw this in three dimensions. There's those hook bars coming into your column. If these hooked bars are spaced greater than six bar diameters, uh, then you can use 1.0 uh, That's a pretty tall order. This is a steel for the negative moment for your girders that that you that you designed earlier It it'll be hard for for that steel to be spaced that much. So realistically if you want to use 1.0 These purple hoops total have to be 40% of the hooked uh, bars okay, There we go um, other factors, uh, again, you're going to calculate that equation, but also 8 bar diameters and 6, six inches, uh, where I'm using H for hook, the hook bars. Um, the minimum has to be greater than those. The minimum is these. Okay, So you take the maximum, 3. You don't use hooks in compression when the steel's in compression. And there are separate seismic considerations for hooks. That are beyond the scope of this class and how are you going to use all this stuff okay so remember you designed these girders okay, so here's a, a girder for your project and these girders were coming into columns and these columns were 18 inches um, I'm gonna reduce this a little bit there we go um, this cover is 1.5 inches, which means you have available to you, uh, not counting the ties, 
uh, at most 16.5 inches, right? 18 minus one and a half. If you cannot get L D hook less than 16.5 inches, and actually even less than that by the time you get the ties in there, in the column, there's gonna be ties like this. If that, if you can't get that development length less than 16 and a half inches, um, your only choice is to make the column bigger or to use a smaller bar, but you've already picked these out. This is uh, your uh, negative moment steel that you designed in your girder. And so, um, yeah, you, you, you could be all the way, that's all done and you submitted that. And then uh, you check the development length uh, and, and it doesn't work. You're gonna either have to change the size of the columns or uh, smaller bars for for your steel okay so uh that's that and um the next topic will be the development length of bars in compression but we'll stop here